everybody. Hello. Glad to have you with us. It's a rainy day in Toronto for those of you that are in the GTA. Uh, you already know that, but for those friends that are watching from all around the world, it's a beautiful day, but it's a spring rainy day here in Toronto. And it's interesting because the theme for this month is all the different ways in which the Holy Spirit is talked about in the scriptures. And rain is one of them, but that's not the one we're talking about. We're talking no. about fire of God today. And every sermon that we're going to be having this month is loosely focused on Acts chapter 2, where if you remember, the believers saw fire on each other's heads and were filled with fire. The community of believers, sorry, the community of uh, Jewish people that were in the city of Jerusalem heard wind, and so that's going to be talked about in, in uh, next week by David Benet. And then when the believers came out of the house, and so the fire mixed with the wind people, then there was wine. And the 120 believers were accused of being filled with, with wine, with alcohol. They've already been drinking. And uh, Peter goes, no, no, it's only 9 in the morning. We're not those type of people. 11 o'clock people maybe, but not 9 a.m. people. That's not in the scriptures. <laughs> Anyways, so the focus today is on welcoming the Holy Spirit as fire. And remember, John the baptizer prophesied that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and fire and uh, we're really privileged to have John and Carol Arnott, our founding pastors, that are back with us today. And so they're going to be the ones who are ministering after we have a worship time for about 45 minutes or so. Sandra and I will come up. We'll have some flow, Holy Spirit connection time with you. And for those of you that are watching for the very first time, if you're watching on YouTube and you're not used to us, hit the subscribe button. And that just allows you to be able to get notices uh, two or three times a week. There's new content on our YouTube channel. So if you press subscribe, that gets that for you. And everyone, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you don't mind taking 10 seconds, go to the share button, click that, uh, invite your friends to come and join us for the church today. I'd like those of you at home to stand up with us. Those of you in the room, we have about 200 people in the room today. That's our, our limit. And uh, those of you in the room, if you'll stand with us as well, we're just going to welcome the Holy Spirit and then see what he wants to do today. Sandra, yeah, so, how about you pray? So Holy Spirit, we thank you that, that you're here we thank you that you're in our homes right now where we're at, we're at. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would just come and just move ahead of us. Lord, that you would allow us to see what you're doing this morning. And Father, I'm asking that you, Holy Spirit, you would release your peace into our homes, into our family situations, work, works, our, our jobs, all those things. But Father, today our eyes are focused on you. And so, Holy Spirit, we want to just give you this time as we come to this place of worship that we look to you and we just position ourselves. And in everything, Lord, we give thanks. Lord, you get all the glory. You get all the honor. It's all about you. Everything that you've done, it's about you. And so we thank you for what you've done here at Catch Fire Toronto and what you're doing in our city, Lord. And we just give you praise and we just thank you. But, Lord, this morning, we just want to reach stretch your hands into the heavens and Lord we just want to begin again by thanking you and praising you and honoring you in this place and so Father come and have your way and Lord be with the worship team today be with our our team that's in this room Lord that is facilitating the cameras and the sound and all those things Lord just be with them fill them up in the name of Jesus, Jesus name. let's worship Never sleeps, and there's 
no promise you won't keep Time and again you stand beside us
spirit of a revelation open my heart again spirit of a wisdom open my eyes again spirit of a revelation open my heart cause I
God for is it Holy Ghost breathe on us we pray As we repent and turn from sin Revival and smoldering Breath of God fan us into flame so we need a fresh wind Fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. For hearts that burn with hope.
fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out A holy anointing The power of your presence Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out We pray Holy anointing Holy anointing We pray Let it surround us Oh Yes A holy anointing A holy anointing A holy anointing We pray We pray So let all the redeemed For all the signs
that last phrase is really the, the only adequate response is with all the goodness of God, I adore you. And those of you at home, those of you in the building, how about you just close your eyes. Just feel being in his presence. God's with us in our homes, in your cars, in this place. He's with us. And if you're a follower of Jesus, we can say thank you. We can say we worship you, we adore you. You're our king, you're our everything. And our hearts know it's true. It's true. I'd like to talk to those of you that aren't necessarily sure that you're a follower of Jesus, don't really know that you've connected with God. So whether you're at home or in the building, Jesus met a gentleman by the name of Nicodemus, who was one of the, the rabbis in Israel. And here this man who's very educated, knew the scriptures, left, right, back, forth, all over, knew the scriptures. And he met with Jesus because there was something unique about Jesus. And in their one-on-one, -on -one, Jesus said something shocking to this very learned God lover. And that was, you need to be born again. Even though you can know God and feel God, Jesus said every single person has to have a personal relationship with Jesus, with him. And so he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not should be, not could be, you must. Very strong words. And Nicodemus had a little bit of struggle trying to figure that out. Jesus explained it to him. And as we see from later in the scriptures, this rabbi had a born again experience and became a follower of Jesus and was born again. How do you become born again? Friends, it's really very, very simple. Uh, church family, you'll have heard me say the ABCs, but it's, it's all the way through the scriptures. As Jesus is talking, as other writers in the scriptures are talking about how do we connect, first of all, it's to say, I admit that I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And the Bible says, all of creation, every single person is born with sin and has sin. It's part of our DNA. And that's the part of us that needs to be forgiven. That's the part of us that needs a loving God to come and to eradicate that from us because the consequences of sin is death, eternal death, eternal separation from God. And the good news is that Jesus came to die on a cross and to take away our sins. He took our sins on his physical body while he was on the cross. He took our sins into the grave. And as we celebrated last Sunday, he rose three days later with no sin consequences on his body. In fact, his body was a better body. He was able to transport. He was able to go through walls. He had a what's called a glorified body. No evidence of sin's restrictions on his body. It's one of the big deals about Resurrection Sunday. It proves to us that there's life after death and that God has forgiven us. So the A is, I admit that I have sinned. And B is I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, went into the grave for my sins. And that when I believe in him, when I give my all to him, give my heart to him, my sins were buried in that grave. And when Jesus rose with new life, that's what happens to me. I start over again. I'm born again. 
And then the letter C. The Bible says this, that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It's a great word. You're going to be sozoed. That's the Greek word. Perfection comes. Everything good comes when we call upon the name of the Lord. And so friends, if you're in this room and you aren't really sure that you've given your life to Jesus, you can be sure right now. And those of you that are watching from your home, from your car, wherever you are, I'd like everyone to say this prayer with me. So just repeat after me. Jesus, I admit that my life has been full of sin. I've said things, I've done things, I've thought things that go against God. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died for me. Say it again, for me, for me, for all of my sins, he died. And Jesus, I call upon you right now. Come into my life, wash me clean, forgive me, and by your spirit, may I be born again right now. Friends, if you're watching and you said that prayer with us, we'd love to make a connection with you right now. And if you go to our Zoom link, which is our website, ctftoronto.com slash get prayer now. It's going to be on the screen. ctftoronto.com slash get prayer now. We have some amazing people that would love to talk with you and pray with you right now. Now, if you're not comfortable to do that, the other thing is just to go into the chat and say, I just said Steve's prayer. Actually, it's not my prayer, Bible prayer. But just say, I said that prayer. And one of the monitors there, one of the folks on the, from our team that's watching that, they'll be able to connect with you, send you a personal message, and you can just have a connection via chat right now. So I want to encourage you to do that. And those of you that are in the room here, if that was something that you just said for the very first time, connecting with Jesus, if you'd like someone to talk with you and minister and pray with you right now, I want to encourage you to walk around over here and just come right over to this spot over here, just to the side of the stage, and some of our team will be there and pray with you right now. Amen. Church, those of you in the room, stay standing. Today, sadly, was a record number of people contacting COVID in the history of Canada, in the province of Ontario. And Sandra and I want to just pray over you and pray health, but we also want to lift off fear. We want to lift off apprehension. Uh, Sandra and I went for a walk yesterday afternoon, maybe three o'clock, something like that. And it was very interesting because there's two or three believers on our court. And so some of us were talking and every, wearing, wearing masks, there was one lady who wasn't wearing a mask that was gardening. And here we are. And I had to go back to my house. I forgot my water bottle, went back in and another neighbor was there. And I said, why don't you come over? We're all just chatting. And she said, no, no, no. Um, I, I don't want to be close to people. And she was, if I could say it, had a little fear that just being with neighbors, that something would happen to her negatively. And just from reading the social media friends, people who don't know Jesus are living with fear. They're struggling and there's anger. And so we just want to pray that off of, off of you. If you're feeling weighted down, if you're feeling anxious, we want to lift that off of you right now in Jesus' name. So those of you in the room, those of you at home, how about you just lift your hands. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. We're welcome, welcoming the protection of the Lord on us, of good health, our immune systems to be strong, our breathing to be strong. Father, keep sicknesses and diseases away from us. And Father, we're asking especially for the anxiousness that people are feeling the heaviness that people are, are having with what's happening to our society. How come all these changes are happening? And Father, may the Spirit of God come and just bring us peace. I was reminded when we were worshiping about a month ago, the power of prayer, but you'll remember on the news about the volcanic, volcanic 
eruption that, that happened in Iceland. And I remember there was just right away Facebook, prayer everywhere. And they were praying and they were just saying, please pray that the gases go into the sea, that the, the, the lava goes into the sea, that the, the, the lava, the hot lava does not cross the road, the main road from the airport into the city and that the lava does not go into the, the main city. And so people all over the world began to pray and ask God to blow. And I just feel like that's what we need to do right now. We need to just ask the Holy Spirit the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow this COVID into the sea. Amen. Come on, are you agreeing with me right now? Those that are here, those that are watching online right now, Father, we just thank you right now that, Father, you answered the prayers of Iceland, Lord, and you blew those, that, those dangerous gases, and you blew that just all into the sea, Father, and the hot lava. And now these people are literally, I heard that they are just going to visit the places where the lava was. And they're just, oh my goodness, look what happened. Father, may people come to our nation, Lord, um, where whatever nation you're living in um, right now, may they look back and they'll go, this is where the Holy Spirit was. And this is where the miracle of the Holy Spirit came and blew COVID out of our nation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good. Well, welcome church family. Those of you that are here, you may be seated. Church that's at home, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just a couple quick announcements for you. For all of you that would like to be in our meeting next week, starting at one o'clock every Sunday afternoon is when you can register for the next meeting. We are gonna be limited to 200 for this month. Uh, the intent of the new lockdown law is that we stay, stay safe. And even though we're allowed to have higher numbers, we want to honor the intent of the law, not just the letter of the law. And so we've chosen to limit to 200. So just to let you know, you can register as of 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, how many of you like to collect rewards from credit cards, from Tim Hortons, Starbucks, those kind of things? Yep. If you have the opportunity to go into a restaurant and you've got a credit you have the opportunity of going to Tim Hortons and you get to cash in some of your, your rewards. It's a nice little feeling to be able to have a free coffee or a free donut or those kind of things. Uh, when I used to travel quite a bit, having free flights with Air Canada, always amazing to be able to have a free flight, saving thousands and thousands of dollars. Do you know why I had that? Because I'd invested, I'd purchased flights in the past, and every time I do that, I get a credit. Every time you go to Tim Hortons or Starbucks and show your card, you get a credit. Did you know that as a follower of Jesus, every time that you give, you get a credit? Did you know that churches get credits in heaven? Here's what the Bible says, Philippians chapter four. Paul's writing to the Philippian church and he says, moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving. That's what we're talking about. As we give, we receive. It's one of the reasons why followers of Jesus around the world are the most consistent and extravagant givers of any faith, of any group of society. Followers of Jesus in Canada, Statistics Canada says it, Revenue Canada knows it, Christians are the most generous people in Canada, period. Yep. Why do we do that? Because we understand, we understand giving and receiving. We understand how the kingdom of God works. And so Paul says, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. So they're sponsoring Paul as a missionary. And our church has missionaries as well that we sponsor. He says, I don't desire your gifts. What I desire is that more to be credited to your account as a church. That church in Thessalonica was gaining credits with God that they could cash in when they needed to. I've received full payment and have more than enough, and I'm amply supplied now that I've received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent. They were a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, here's a practical thing. Just You may not know this, but that passage about churches getting credits, this is a tithing church. 
So we believe that from the beginning of the scriptures to the end of the scriptures that God is asking for a tithe. And so as individuals, we do that. Sandra and I give a tithe uh, automatically, no questions asked, just deducted from our salary, goes straight to the church as our saying to Jesus, I trust you, we trust you. But we as Catch the Fire Church, all the Catch the Fire partner churches around the world, there's like 150 churches, all of them also tithe. And we tithe into a central pot. And from there, another tithe goes out to missions. And so this principle of giving and receiving and, and having credits is just consistent in the scriptures. And so for those of you that are givers, I want to just bless you. You've got credits that when you need them, you can call out to God and say, this is the time I could use some free coffee, please. I could use a free flight or whatever it is that uh, you're able to get back from the Lord. Amen. On the screen is all different ways to give. And for those of you that are in the room, if you'd like to give your gift today, on the way out right by the door is a box. Or if you'd like to use a credit card or debit machine, head into the coffee shop after the meeting. Thank you so much for all of you who are generous givers to catch the fire. Amen. Perfect. Well, church, I'm going to invite John and Carol to come on up. And John, if you don't mind bringing the, uh, did you bring the wipes? Perfect. Church, let's stand up. This is our founding pastors, and some of you that are new won't know John and Carol as much. Did you bring the Lysol? I'm going to wipe this one down for John. There it is. Santa's got it. Perfect. Thanks. All right. For those of you that are new, you won't know that John and Carol, you probably know this, but uh, they started this church in May will be 32 years, John, if I'm correct. 32, 31, something like that. The church started in 1988, May 1988, and uh, they've moved the last couple years to, uh, to Stratford, Ontario, which is where Carol's from, and so that's where they live now. So we don't see them too often, and the last time that I asked John to come, he was supposed to be here on the Sunday between Christmas and New Year's, which was John's birthday was turned 80 on Christmas Day, so he was supposed to be here, but we couldn't have a meeting. And I, I was trying to get John to come in, in front of the cameras, and he goes, no, the next time I come, I want to have a live audience. And it's like, perfect. Second Sunday live audience, John, you're back. So thank you for that. And they're going to, they're going to kick us off in this series about the Holy Spirit. Today we're talking about the Holy Spirit fire. Next week, the Holy Spirit wind. And David Benet from the School of Ministry is going to be our speaker. And then in two weeks, Dan Slade, who is perfect at saying, come Holy Spirit, and wine flows when Dan preaches. And so that's the, the focus in three weeks from now. So John and Carol, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, the rest is yours, whatever you want to do. Oh, gosh, it's so good to be back, Steve. Come on. Woo! Lord, I'm just having an awful time not going around hugging everybody. Ah! But anyway, big hugs and lots of love to you all. And we're just so delighted to be back in Toronto. And uh, John's going to be speaking on the fire. Mm. Woo! And are you ready to receive the fire? Just say... Holy Spirit, just, I am ready to receive. I open my heart and I say, Lord, fill me with your fire. And Acts, it says, the Holy Spirit and fire. Ooh. And we want that fire of God to burn within us just to impart, to fill us so that we can go and be ah, effective witnesses to healing the sick, mm, to preaching the gospel, to loving one another. And so I just am so excited about today and being with you. And we bring you lots of love from the Jubilee in Stratford. And uh, it's just Great to be here. <laughs> Shoo, fill them up, Lord. Let the fire come. Let your Holy Spirit yes. come. Oh, I'd love to go and lay hands Let's on you. Let's just begin to Ooh, breathe it in right yes. here. Yes, drink, drink, drink. Ah, Just breathe him in. He's all over this place. Whew. 
Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. More. Let it come, Holy Spirit. Just fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them all the way right through in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. This church is called Catch the Fire because we want you to catch, catch the, the fire. fire. <laughs> and uh, that name came from the very first conference we did yeah. following the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because um, we, we wanted to name it something significant, really. And uh, we, we thought of parties to go <laughs> um, but no. catch the fire seemed to really, really summarize what we were trying to convey because God wants us to catch this burning presence of the Holy Spirit that has refining uh, power for each and every one of us, causing us to be uh, more like Jesus but fall deeper in love with him. That's, that's the whole purpose. Yeah. And so... Let's all catch the fire. And so many of you watching at home today, we pray that this message will yes, stir Lord. you deeply and call you in. All right. Thank you, Carol, mm -hmm. so much. Can we begin with a word of prayer together? Lord, I thank you that you uh, have such a great plan for the whole earth and for the whole universe, really. And that plan is involving us, calling us deeply into your uh, glory and into your power and into your love. <sighs> and so as we think about these things today, give us an eternal sense of where all of this is going. We want to be a part of it with everything that's within us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. Well, just to give us some context this morning, friends, um, the bigger picture is this. Jesus Christ is planning on taking over the world. I don't know if you knew that or not, but his plan is right on track. And that day is, is getting closer and closer and closer. And it's actually imminent right now. And so we've had coming up on 6,000 years of human civilization on earth. It's been 2,000 years almost since Jesus was here. Israel, of course, once again, is a nation. Jerusalem is their capital. And the world trouble is brewing, perhaps like never before, according to Luke 21 and Matthew 24 and all these amazing scripture. And God has planned for you and I to be able to access his supernatural presence and power. And some of the symbolism and some of the pictures of that is represented in the feasts that were given to ancient Israel. And, you, you know, one way you could say it's their feast, but in another way, it's the feasts of the Lord. And so we're talking this morning about the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot in Hebrew, the Feast of Weeks. And uh, Steve is going to be featuring three symbols <laughs> that, that presented when this was fulfilled in the New Testament and launched the church. And so when we read it in the book of Acts, we find that first there was a rushing mighty wind, and then there was fire that came and rested on them all, and then finally there was new wine because they were overwhelmed with this presence. And don't be surprised at this. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there's something debilitating about that. You just don't carry on in your full strength like normal. This has an effect of overwhelming you. Now, don't, it's no surprise if God's going to touch you even in an insignificant way. The miracle is that you live through that. Wouldn't you agree? And so these things are coming our way. And when we, we I want to give you the context, first of all, the, the feasts of ancient Israel. Who, who can tell me what they are? There's three main ones. 
First one is Passover, which has three parts to it. The second one is weeks, the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. And then the third one is Tabernacles, which also has three parts to it. And Passover began with a very significant event way back in Egypt when it was time for Moses to lead the people out. The tenth and final plague was this Passover. And God said, all right, Egypt, you won't let my, my people go. My son Israel, you won't let him go. And so your firstborn is going to take a big hit tonight. So the angel of death and judgment is going to pass through the land. Old Israel, kill a lamb, catch the blood, paint the blood on the lintel and the two side posts. And so actually they make the sign of the cross over their door. And he said, then when death goes through the land, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And your firstborn will be spared. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, why did that work? What do you think? I can't wait for the uh, home audience to respond, so I have to just pause briefly and then give you the answer. That worked because it was a prophetic picture looking forward to a coming event when the Son of God, much like Abraham sacrificing Isaac, the Son of God would actually become that lamb. Just like John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. And Jesus, much to the chagrin, really, of the leaders in Israel, he actually was crucified exactly on the Passover. They didn't want that to happen, but that's how it all played out. He became the Passover lamb, and he died right on the Passover. Now that feast had some elements to it. There was the Passover celebration where the lamb was killed and eaten. And then a, f a few days following, when um, the Sabbath was passed, the first day of the week was called the Feast of First Fruits. And it happened to be three days and three nights after he died, so he he probably died on the, on the Wednesday evening, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he's in the tomb. Sunday morning, bright and early, he rose, and he wasn't alone. There were a number of others, according to Matthew's gospel, that rose with him. And that's called the Feast of First Fruits. And throughout the whole week, both before and after that one, they were eating unleavened bread, and that's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Not to confuse you, but just to give you that. So counting now from the Feast of First Fruits, seven weeks, seven sevenths, led to Pentecost. And this corresponded to another event in the Old Testament where it had its beginning. And so seven weeks after coming out of Egypt, they arrive at Mount Sinai, all right? And uh, I, I would like us to, to look at this and uh, see what this exactly looked like. And so if we go to Exodus chapter 19 and, and, and verse, verse 16, we can uh, read the story about Moses on the mountain in, um, in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I want you to know that this was a fearful, incredible uh, time that they had together. So go with me, please, to, to that verse of Scripture. I'll just find it quickly. Exodus 19 and 16. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. 
And the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Say fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. And then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. And the Lord said then again to Moses, go down, warn the people lest they break through to gaze at the Lord and many of them perish. And so Moses went and did that and uh, then he came back up with Aaron and some of the other leaders. But here's the point, that mountain was on fire. Uh, Jonathan, can I have that slide just real quick? Um, there is a friend of ours named Ron Matson who just one year ago went and visited the real site of Mount Sinai, which is in Arabia, exactly like Paul the Apostle said. And um, uh, you, you can see from the picture, is it forthcoming, guys? Have we got that? Yes? No? Anyway, whenever you get it ready, just put it up. I'll keep talking. And uh, you can see how this is... Uh, Actually, pink granite is what the mountain is made of, and yet it's burned black. And he brought a sample of it back and, and showed a, a geologist who knows about rocks and things. And he says, I, I just can't explain what this is. This is pink granite, but the, the surface down to about half an inch or so is burned black. So um, I don't know, can you blow it up at all? That's Ron, and behind him is the mountain, and you can see the top of it is burned black. And uh, so it's a real place. He said it's like an untouched archeological site. Absolutely amazing. And this mountain was smoking like a furnace, and the fire of God was resting on it. So the Old Testament fulfillment a beginning, I should say, of this looked really, really scary. And now, when we move into the New Testament, we have a New Testament fulfillment of this, and we, we see that in Acts chapter 1, where Jesus is speaking to the apostles, telling them to wait. Acts 1, 4. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard from me. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days now. And John the Baptist had talked about, he's the one who's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And in verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so when we get to Acts chapter 2, we see the fulfillment of this. And I want to read it to you in the first uh, 13 verses. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. I think this is interesting. When the feast was initiated in the Old Testament on Mount Sinai with Moses, fire came and rested on the top of the mountain to the point of burning it black even to this day. When it 
when the feast is fulfilled in a New Testament sense right here in Acts chapter 2, now we see fire coming and resting on the tops of the people, right on the top of their head. Now, I don't know if it singed their hair or what happened, but I know that they got mightily blessed. Woo! Raise your hands to them and say, oh, Lord, I want that holy fire to come and rest upon me because it's introducing us to the God of power and love. There were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men of every nation. When the sound occurred, the multitude ran together, confused. Everyone heard them speak in its own language. They're all amazed, marveled. How is it we hear each in our own language in which we were born? And it lists them all. In verse 12 says, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, what could this mean? What could this mean? And so we're wondering, what could this mean? Well, it means God is wanting to empower you to be a part of extending his kingdom to the absolute ends of the earth. And in order to do that, you need to be filled with the power of God. And so the power needs to be not so much on a mountain as a demonstration, but on you and in you so that that fire uh, can burn and just transform you. Now this is the very thing Joel prophesied. Peter points that out. This is exactly what Joel the prophet prophesied in, in Joel chapter two. It shall come to pass, says God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters are gonna prophesy Old men will dream dreams, young men will see visions on my servants and handmaidens. I'm going to pour out my spirit. How many of you are getting prophetic dreams? Wave excitedly. If you're at home, wave excitedly. And say, oh Lord, yes, but I want more. I love it when I get prophetic dreams. And seeing visions. Carol's had some amazing visions. And we are entering into a time where this is about to be heightened. Listen, God is about to release on the earth the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the world has ever seen. And it's culminating in the return of Christ. I believe it's very soon. How many want that? Yes, we do. And so, Lord, we, we just say, here we are. We want this. I don't want the fire on the top of the mountain. I want the fire on top of me and inside of me. And so fire in scripture is often talking about burnt sacrifices. When something is offered to the Lord, the fire consumes it. Moses first met that fire and the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 verse 2. And... Uh, then we see fire in 1 Kings 18 when Elijah and the prophets of Baal are having a face-off. And the challenge was build the altar, put the sacrifice on, but don't put fire under it because the God who answers by fire, let him be the true God. And so the prophets of Baal did their thing all day long and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then Elijah said, come on, gather close to me. And when he prayed, the fire of God fell, burned up the sacrifice, burned up the rocks, burned up the water. I mean, oh, it was just a day. And the people fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he's the true God. It was a demonstration of his power by fire. And then later that same Elijah was taken up to heaven. Elisha was there, said, Give, I want a double portion of your spirit. He says, all right, if you see me go, it's yours. And suddenly horses and chariots of fire swept up Elijah into the heavenlies. And Elijah, Elisha picked up his mantle and now was a prophet instead of Elijah, but mighty in God. 
And then one time when he's surrounded by a Syrian attack force, uh, his servant came in, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. And he said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Do you know what he saw? The whole mountain around them was full of horses and chariots of fire. What does that mean? Angelic forces were all around them. How many want those angelic forces all around you? And I am praying, Lord, open my eyes that I might see these things. Because we're all together too reactive to what's going on around us, whether it be COVID or circumstances or finances or whatever it is. And of course, one, one last one, Second Chronicles 7, 1, when Solomon prayed and dedicated his new temple, he had this beautiful prayer. And I'd encourage you to, to look at Look at that passage, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 1 and following. But after he finished, the fire of the Lord fell, the scripture says, and burned up the sacrifices, and then the glory cloud of God came in so that the priests could not stand to minister. I think that's funny. This is their big day, dedicating the temple. I mean, it's showtime. They're on. And... They can't get up off the floor because they're overwhelmed by the presence and the power of God. Now, through the years, we've seen people overwhelmed by the fire of God. I think one of the first times was we, Carol and I were doing a, me a, me a meeting in Texas. And... Uh, this pastor there just took off and he's running around the room like really, really fast. And uh, so I, I talked to him later. I said, so what was going on with you? Why were you running? I couldn't help but notice you were running around the room. What was going on? He said, I felt like my feet were on fire. Well, see, if your feet are on fire, you're going to do something like that, aren't you? I remember another time we went to the UK and we did a pastor's meeting and there was like a hundred or so pastors there. It wasn't that big a room. And this one guy, I, I don't know what denomination he was. It might've been Anglican or something, but he was rolling and he'd hit the wall and bounce and hit the wall and, you know, hit the wall and hit the wall. It was kind of like one of those early video games, you know, <laughs> boing, boing. And I asked him after, sir, why were you rolling? Now, my mother told me about holy rollers. Oh, you don't want to get mixed up with them. I'm like, mom, come on, nobody rolls. What are you talking about? Oh, she says they do too. My, my dear Baptist mother, you know, she, she was worried if I get mixed up with these charismatic Pentecostal people. But sure enough, this guy was rolling. And I asked him later, I said, sir, couldn't help but notice you're rolling back and forth. What was going on? Do you know what he said? I felt like I was on fire. Well, when you're on fire, that's what you do. You roll back and forth, hoping to somehow contain it, put it out or whatever. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Another time I, I was... In India, ministering, we were there with Terry Virgo and some others. Carol was with me. And uh, we prayed for this guy, and he's, he's standing there. And he's like, oh, 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 and he's shaking his hands like this. I said, what's going on? He said, my hands, they're burning, they're burning. They're so hot, I don't know what to do. And finally, he ran into the men's room, turned on the tap, and put his hands under the tap to try to cool them down. I tell you what, this fire is real, friends. This fire is real. It can be a refiner's fire because God wants to refine you. Is that okay with you? You want to be refined? Listen, like it or not, we are on a journey to become more and more like Jesus. And so he wants to refine us. 
You can read about refining, like in Malachi chapter 3, uh, verses 2 and 3 and around there. It talks about refiner's fire, like silver. Do you know how they refine silver? They take this, the silver ore and they heat it up to about 1,000 degrees C. And it separates the silver from all the rock and the dross, they call it. And they skim that all off, skim the dross off, and let it all cool down. So it's more pure now. And then they do it the second time. The same thing, more dross, not so much, but they skim that all off and let it cool down. And they do that seven times until the, the jeweler or the purifier can see his perfect reflection in the silver, much like a mirror today, where they have put silver on the back of the glass so that you and I can see your reflection. And God wants to refine you and I until he can see his reflection back to him in what is going on. He wants to let that fire come upon you and burn in you. Now, one last scripture. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. And in Hebrews 12... We have verse 18 to 27. It's telling us this. For you, you and I, have not come to the mountain that may be touched, that burned with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest, the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded, and if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you've come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Good verse right there, friends. The the blood of Abel was crying for justice. What, was, what is the blood of Jesus crying? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only earth, but also heaven. And this once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. And it ends with these two verses. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, Friends, you're receiving a kingdom. It's a kingdom ruled by a godly, righteous, amazing, incredible, perfect king. His name is Jesus. It's ruled in love. It's ruled in fairness. It's ruled in justice. We're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Wow. You kind of, you have to really work on this a bit to think about. I want to snuggle up close to Daddy God here, Abba. You know, but wait a minute, he's a consuming fire. 
I know. But when you have been purified by that fiery presence right there, you are welcome. This has been his heart and his desire all along. So those of you here, why don't you stand with me? And those of you at home, uh, you can stand too if you like. And we're going to get ready to just we're close this ready. right now. So normally, friends, we sign off at the top of the hour. And if you'd like to leave us now, and I don't recommend that, but if you'd like to leave, those of you at home, and have someone to pray with you, if you go to ctftoronto.com, get prayer now until the bottom of the hour. Live people are going to be there to pray with you. But what we normally do for those who are in the building is we have ministry after we shut the cameras off. We're not shutting the cameras off today. We're going to have a bonus time for you today. So those of you at home, do as John said, stand up. Those of you in the house here, stand up. Carol, come on up. Let me get the wipes. Yeah, she's good. Yep. Sandra, do you want to toss me the Lysol again, please? would be for your holy fire to come and rest on us. The very thing that gave birth to the church was the fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. But Lord, it happens on a regular basis now. It is the Father's promised gift that Jesus wants to give to you and I. So hold out your hands to him. Steve's already led us in a forgiveness prayer. But Lord, we see your kingdom coming. And we know your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And we want your kingdom to come. Lord, in Acts 1, the disciples said, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom uh, to Israel? And he's like, it's not for you to know, guys. Not right now, but that day is coming. That day is coming when Jesus Christ will reign 1,000 years of perfect peace on earth. And he wants to reign in your heart, but he also wants to equip you to be a part of his loving family that's gonna bring peace and love all over the earth. And so we ask, Lord, that we would be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. We want to be immersed over and over again in that glory and that fiery love of God. So I pray that you will send your fire onto all of our viewers right here. Let that fire burn. Let it refine. Lord, let it bring us joy and peace and life. Every dark thing is driven away and every life-giving blessing from the Father comes resting upon us. Lord, let those flames of fire burn on our heads right now, just like on that mountaintop. And let fire penetrate to every cell in our being in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we just invite you right now Wow. We invite you to come. You were the one, wow, that came like a mighty rushing wind. You were the one, ah, where the tongues of fire rested on those disciples. And Lord, you want to come with your fire and baptize us afresh with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Whoa! Lord, I ask right now that you would just come at every person that is watching right now, everyone that is in this room. Now, Holy Spirit, will you come and fill us, whoa, to absolute overflowing Wow, Lord, would you let that fire begin to burn? Oh, Lord, let the fire begin to come. Whoa, thank you, Lord. 
Lord, just mm, move amongst the people. Lord, I just ask that you would give them oh, a hunger to say, Lord, don't pass me by. Lord, I want to be refilled. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Lord, the times are short. Whoa. Yes. Mm, and the Lord is saying, I want to pour out. Yo, I want to pour out on you. Oh, my spirit. I want to rekindle, reignite all whoa, that has been laying dormant in there. Oh, I want to come and reignite you because I want to use you in incredible ways. Yes. Use you to ah, bring in this last time harvest. Use you to heal the sick. Whoa. To do signs and wonders and miracles. Wow. And I break fear off. We say fear get lost in the name of Jesus. I take authority over it and I say there is no fear in perfect love. Wow. And Lord, let your perfect love just come and rest on each one. Wow. Lord, we say yes to you. Like Jesus, you said we yes you, in Jesus. the Garden of Gethsemane. We say yes. Yes, we do. And we say yes to you, Holy yes. Spirit. Here we are, Lord. Wow, come and we fill us. We open our heart to you. Wow. We welcome you, mm. Holy Spirit. Wow. Let your electric presence Yo. just tingle upon us mm. right now. Fire Let that heavy Lord. weight of glory settle down upon wow. us right now. Wow. Let the fire of your heat mm. and your burning wow. rest upon us right here, right now. Lord, we we love it. it, Lord. We we receive it. We oh, welcome it. We do, In the Lord. name of Jesus. We believe in impartation. Wow, we do, Jesus. We believe in supernatural wow. encounter with the Holy mm. Spirit. Wow. You can analyze oh. it later, friends. Just oh. go for it right now. Those of you at home, wow. Feel that heat. Welcome it. Yes, We've Lord. asked for bread. He's not giving you a stone. Let wow. your glory settle down on yes, your people Lord. now. In Jesus' mighty mm. name, my God. We, we cannot get enough. Coals that are in you. We blow them we blow into fire. fire. <laughs> Holy oh, yeah. Spirit. Blow. 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 Blow just the fire ignite. Turn to your mm. friend and just blow in their belly there. Let those Whoa. coals flare wow. up right now and burst into flame one more time. Wow. In the name of Jesus. Yo, Shabba. Mm. Let the fire oh. burn on them. Oh, oh. yes, Lord God. Yo, oh. Shakaraba. Let your mm. fire burn Whoa. on your people. Yes, Lord. Whoa. Your debilitating Whoa. presence ah, ah. comes mm. upon us, Father, ah. in Ooh. the name of Jesus. Wow. Ooh. Fall on that wonderful keyboard player there, Lord. Uh. <laughs> Shabba. More, Lord. Pour Fall it in. Follow these friends right Pour it in. Pour Follow it in. these friends right Pour here. It in. Keep Pardon. coming, Holy Spirit. Pardon. Keep coming, Holy Shut Spirit. This is Lord. your house. This is your Yo. meeting. Mm. We want to catch that fire uh, over and over Lord. and over again. Pardon. And do not Pardon. let the fire go out. The <clears throat> fire on the More. altar in God's tabernacle you, and in Lord. God's temple was never supposed to go out. More. They kept it going day Ow. and night. Lord, we want fire burning wow. on the altar of our hearts continuously. Oh, Let Jesus. it burn and burn wow. and burn and burn and burn. In the name of Jesus, wow. for wow. your great name's sake, fall upon these dear friends at wow. home. Let them catch it. Let them keep it. Let yes, them Lord. spread it and give it away. Yes. That's the one thing about fire. It's very contagious, 
provided we got some good dry wood around and something that'll burn. Wood, burn, baby. Oil, I don't know. Burn. Yeah. Just uh, if you're here with your spouse, just say burn, baby, and lay your sure. finger on them and let them burn right there. In Jesus' uh, name. Burn, David. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. All right.